I first heard about Makey Lab, it was a science fiction author by the name of Cory Doctorow who was telling me about his wife who had quit her job at Channel 4 to start a business making 3D printed dolls. And I thought, that sounds cool. And I also thought, that sounds crazy. The idea came to me in 2010. I was at this conference called Digital Kids uh, for part of my work at Channel 4. So that's where I would go and hang out with people doing virtual worlds and games. And for the first time in 2010, they had co-located Digital Kids with the New York Toy Fair. And the digital stuff was all in the basement and the physical stuff was all upstairs. And like one mention of Twitter and I think three mentions of Facebook. I was like, holy crap, this is a, an analog business. Right and downstairs is the digital business, and can we bridge them with physical, digital technology? So the vision was virtual goods that produce physical goods. So we set up as a games company that would produce toys. And when I went out to raise the money, a lot of people were like, well, which one is it? Are you a games company or are you a toys company? Because you can't be both. We we're like, no, no, you don't get it. We are both, it has to be both. You yeah. built a prototype and it cost how much? 200,000 pounds. 200,000? Yeah. For a lot of people, that's like, holy shit, that's a lot of money. For me. For building, for building physical stuff, yeah. or even top-end digital stuff, yeah. it was not that much money. Basically, we got given the money, but we also had to prove that it could happen. So we built the demo and put it live. At that point, it was like, OK, so we can do it, right? This can be done. They have color, mm. and they have uh, um, increasingly trendy outfits. Mm. Yeah, which we're getting better and better I, at that. I know a lot about this doll. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, with Dylon, uh, the pale brown comes out kind of pinky and the dark brown comes out nice and brown, but the light medium brown comes out green. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, oh, that's a bit odd. And then we were like, well, you know, maybe some people want green. <laughs> <laughs> when we set out again, when we said toys and games, I'm going to use 3D printing, immediately people thought, oh, kids will print their own toys at home, right? Yeah. And we were like, no. The way you make a makey is through basically what we call doll builder but it's an app the game is supposed to be the beginning of why you would create a makey other than you can right, right? so there's the types of customer who's going to come along and go oh i can make my own that's really awesome um, but then there's another big group of customers who kind of need a story world that they want to be part of and we need to bring in the narrative and we need to bring in the kind of essence of what a makey is so the game is about making Right. right, so when Mattel created Monster High, it took four years, I'm told, from concept to shelf. Total secrecy, until bang, out it comes. It's like, we've gone from demo to selfages in kind of just over a year. So what's weird about it is we're visible. We're doing it in front of everybody. Downside, obviously, although we've yet to see this, but this is what everybody worries about. You know, every time I speak to an investor, they're like, well, aren't you worried that Mattel is just going to come along and copy you? The, the most important thing that you can garner is, is attention and love from your customers and grow it like that. As a startup, as a small startup, you can't wake up every morning going, oh, Mattel are gonna copy us, we've got to, what are we gonna do? Right. Because otherwise you'd never get anything done.